Hello, good morning, everyone. Let's start. So today we will finish uh, all the materials we are going to cover in in the coming exam, and then next week we still have a uh, one tutorial and one lecture summary. So during the lecture summary, I will talk about something that is not going to be covered in the exam. So I will talk about relation. Okay. So let's focus on the remaining parts of the planar graph today. Here we define something called platonic solids. Okay, so what is meant by platonic solid? Platonic solid is a convex three-dimensional shape such that all the phases are the same, and then each of these phases of, of the of the of this 3D shape is going to be a regular polygon. So for instance, this is let's look at this one. This is the usual uh, regular cube that we see every day. So it is a it is a shape with six faces, and then each of the faces is a regular square. So it is a regular quadrilateral. So it is a square, and this one, this one, we call it a tetrahedron. So each of the faces is a is a what? Is a equilateral triangle, and then they are all together four faces. And this one is another example. This one has eight faces so you can think of this as you are gluing two square based pyramid together so we form this one so it has eight outermost faces each of the face is a is an equilateral triangle and then this one this one is for each face there there it is a regular pentagon which five size pentagon and then all together, there are going to be 12 phases. So people usually use this to design a calendar. So we are putting uh, each month on one phase. We call this shape a dodecahedron. And then this one, this one is having 20 phases. Each of the phase is a equilateral triangle. If my memory is correct, it's called an icosahedron. Okay. So tetra means four. You, there is a famous game called Tetris, and then Tetris is a, is a game that we are using the uh, two dimensional uh, uh, pieces to fill up the 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 board and then and then to cancel. Yeah, you you know this game. And then each of these pieces has exactly four squares. So tetra means four. This is oct octahedron. So octa means Eight, so our month October is actually the eighth month in the Roman calendar. The first month in the ca Roman calendar is March. It is because spring comes in March. Okay, so the eighth month, which is now the tenth month in in our calendar now, so it is October. So it is octahedron, and this one is called dodecahedron. Deca means ten. Dodeca means 12, so it is a 12 phase polytope, okay, 3, 3D shape. So we call this platonic solid because these shapes are known already at the time of Plato, the, the Greek uh, philosopher. Okay, yeah, enough introduction. So, so now our question here is how many platonic solids are there in the whole world? We can actually prove it that there are only five platonic solids and these are all the platonic solids that we can imagine so there is no more there is no less okay so we just require the euler planar formula to help us to prove this one so let's try to prove it together so each of these 3d shape is formed by regular polygon so let us use n and m <clears throat> to specify the behavior of this polygon. So n is the number of vertices of this polygon, which is also equal to the number of sides of this polygon. So for this case, it is 3. For this case, it is a square. So it is 4. For this case, it is 5. Okay. And then another thing is, because it is a 3D shape, so each of the vertices is going to be linked to 
some edges. Okay, at least three edges. Okay, because two edge cannot form a 3D shape. So each vertex is linked to at least three. So some of them can be more. So for instance, this one, it is linked to five of them. Okay. So N is the uh, number of vertices of each polygon and M is the degree of each vertex. Okay. Now for platonic solid, we must have N times F is equal to two times E. This is the same as the handshaking lemma. If you add up all the edges in each face, so they are going to be n, sorry, add up the number of edges in each face. So there are going to be n edges here, n edges here. Is that okay? And then all together, the f faces. So nf is the total number of edges in all the faces. But then you will see that each edge is counted twice. So it is equal to 2e. And similarly, this time we add up the edges that is linked to each of the vertex. So for this vertex, it is linked to 3, this vertex is also linked to 3, and so on and so forth. Each vertex has m edges linked together, and there are v vertex in this platonic solid, so it is equal to 2e, okay? Because each edge is counted exactly twice. Now the next thing that we will also see is that each of this platonic solid here, it is actually a planar graph. So Think of one face, you can pull out this vertex outside, 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 and then flatten the whole thing into a piece of paper so you can have a way to draw all the edges without crossing. So each of them, so this is a this is the dodecahedron. So let's move this vertex very far away. This vertex far away, far away, far away, far away, and then we press everything onto the board. Then all together, all the edges and will not be crossing each other. Okay. So because of this, because of this, the E, the F, and the V must obey the Euler planar formula. So, so in that case, V plus F has to be equal to E plus two. This is a Euler planar formula, and the V and the F that we have seen is actually before. V is actually equal to 2E divided by M, and F is equal to 2E divided by N. This is from this part. Is that okay? So we can do some simplification. Everything is like there is an E, E. So we divide everything by E. So we will have, uh, by 2E, so we will have 1 over M plus 1 over N is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over E. So we get the First part here divided by 2e, and the last part here divided by 2e, we get this one. So 1 over m plus 1 over n is at least something greater than 1 over 2. It cannot be 1 over 2. It must be greater because there is something to add here. The next thing here is that we need to have n and n to be greater than 3. It is because greater than or equal to 3 because n is the number of sides of a polygon. So at least 3. M is the number of edges linked to a vertex, so for 3D shape, at least 3, okay? But we claim that one of them must be equal to 3. The reason is that if M and N are at least 4, then on the left-hand side, the sum cannot be more than 1 over 2, because 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is only 1 over 2. So what does that mean? You, you must have M, N, each of them has to be greater than or equal to 3, but then you cannot have both to be strictly greater than 3. Otherwise, the left-hand side cannot add up to 1 over 2. So in that case, we know that one has to be equal to 3, the other may be other number. Maybe 3, maybe other number. So when n is equal to 3, so one of them, so we assume, let's try n is equal to 3, what will happen? Now, when n is equal to 3, then the variation of m can be 3, 4, 5. It cannot be 6 because 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6 is only 1 over 2. So it cannot be more than 1 over 2. So what does that mean? When n is fixed to be 3, the variation of m can only be 3, 4, 5. And then these are the corresponding uh, 3D shapes that we can draw. Similarly, 
Suppose that m is equal to three, then the variation of n can only be n can only be three, four, five as well, and these are the corresponding shapes. And then one of them is in common, n m both equal to three, so that means that altogether there are only five platonic solids. That's it. Okay. So so here let's take a look. So m is equal to three. So what does that mean? So for each of the polytope here, the vertex degree is always equal to three. 3 and then 3 here and then for this one m is equal to 3 4 5 so here the vertex degree here is 3 the vertex degree is 4 and the vertex degree here is 5 and then here because n is equal to 3 it means that every polygon is an equilateral triangle okay so that's all about platonic solid Okay, so we are now going to move on to another interesting problem called map coloring. So this is a map. So there are countries and then boundaries. There could be seas, something like this. Now, for a given map that we draw on a paper, so it is a planar graph actually, we can actually Pro, uh, produce something called the dual graph of this map. So the dual graph here is we are going to use a vertex to represent a region. So this region A, I'm going to use a vertex A to represent it, region B, a vertex B to represent it, and then we join two vertex here. If the two regions here, they share some parts in common, they share a common boundary. So A and B on their boundary, there is some part they are they're touching. So A and B, there, there, yeah. So in that case, we join A B. We join A C. It is because A and C here. We join A A G because A G here. G is actually the outermost uh, region. Okay. So this is called the dual graph. And notice that if the map here is drawn on a plane, then the pl the dual graph. Is also a planar graph. We can draw it without any edge crossing each other. Yeah, how can we see? So think of this as we have a, a, a capital of A here in the center, a capital of this region B in the center, and we can draw the rows from A to B, draw the rows from A to the capital of C, and so on and so forth. Then we can always arrange the rows within the region so that they are not crossing. Now every road in each region are not crossing, so in that case, all the rows, all the edges in the whole dual graph will not be crossing. So there's a way that we can draw the rows or the edges here without crossing each other. Okay? So we want to do coloring on this map. What is meant by a coloring? So we want to color each region or each vertex here by one color. And then we want the region that is attaching to uh, each other, they must be colored differently. Or here on the right hand side in the dual graph, we want the vertices that are linked by an edge should be colored in different colors. Okay, so such a coloring is called a proper coloring. Yeah, a proper coloring. Okay. And then the question here is, how many colors do we need? What is the minimum number of colors that we need so that we can color all the, all the vertices or the regions properly? It turns out that in 1976, two mathematicians, Apple and Hacken, they showed that every planar graph can be four colored. So in that case, every planar map can also be colored in four colors. But the proof there is actually very tedious. It has nearly 2,000 cases to consider, and then these are the big cases, and then there are many subcases. So to verify their proof to be correct, they rely on a computer. But here, what we are going to show here is if we allow us more colors. So let's say we have five colors, then it is easy to show that every planar graph can be colored using five colors. And the proof here, we just have two main cases to consider. So in this sense, it re implies that every map can be five colored. And because, because the dual graph is a planar graph and it can be five colored. Okay, so, 
So here, what does that mean? So A is colored red here. So that means that we are going to color the region A red. B is colored yellow. So it is yellow, blue, green, and something like this. So if we have a coloring of the dual graph, we can color the original map properly using the same corresponding coloring. Okay, so how can we show? Now, uh, when during the preparation of, of, of this proof, I found that it is very interesting. It is going to use all the proving techniques that we have nearly. So it uses contradiction, it uses induction, and it also uses uh, uh, construction. So we have induction, contradiction, and construction working together to prove this, but the proof is actually simple. So first of all, the contradiction part. We claim that for a planar graph, so oh, first of all, we assume that the graph has at least five vertices, yeah, because otherwise it, it has only four. So we are coloring a planar graph, okay? We are coloring the dual part, the planar graph. So we assume that the graph has at least five vertices because if there are fewer, then, then we have five colors. So we can color each vertex using a distinct color, okay? So the graph has at least five vertices. And then in the planar graph, we must see that there must be a vertex with degree at most 5. We claim that the planar graph can be complicated, but then there must be a vertex such that the degree is small. So for instance, the degree D here is only 1, 2, 3, 4. So there must be a vertex with degree which is small, smaller than or equal to 5. So the reason is that if it is not the case, then the total degree will be... Hmm? A, the total degree here will be greater than, oh, there is a typo here, the total, I didn't discover this. So the total degree will be greater than or equal to 6 times V, right? Because each vertex has degree at most 5. If it is not the case, then each vertex will have degree at least 6, okay? So, uh, sorry, if there is no vertex with degree at most 5, it means that every vertex has degree at least 6, so this should be a 6 here. So total degree will be greater than or equal to 6v, 2e greater than or equal to 6v, but then it contra so e will be greater than or equal to 3v. And then this contradicts to the, to the fact that for a planar graph, e has to be less than or equal to 3v minus 6, strictly less than 3, 3v. So the first part, the contradiction here comes from we cannot have, so if we assume that every vertex has degree at least 6, there is something wrong. So it means that one vertex will have small degree at most 5. Okay. Now, the next part is induction. So here we assume that inductively, all the planar graphs with n minus 1 vertex can be 5 colored. So, so we now assume this is true. And then we move on to find find a way to color a graph with exactly n vertices. Is that okay? So, so what we are going to do, okay, so our idea here is that suppose that every n minus 1 vertex graph can be colored properly with five colors. Then with n vertex, what we are going to do is we first find a vertex v that has a small degree, which is at most five. What we are going to do here is that we first take away V so that the graph take away V and all the edges joining V. Okay, so that the remaining graph will be five colored. And then we put V back and see what will happen. Okay, now because the graph we assumed is planar, so we are all the all the way that we are drawing here, we are assuming that we are using the planar representation so that the edges that we draw here will not be crossing each other. So this is already the way that we draw. And then we focus on the part that what happens to V. Okay. Now, so first of all, we take away V so and all the edges here. And let, let, let us first use induction to find a way how to color the remaining vertices. Now, V has at most five neighbors because the degree of V is at most 5. So if the neighbors of V uses only 4 colors or fewer, 
then that means that we have one color to spare for v so when we put v back we just put v back using the color that we are not using so in that case this is a good case for us so this is already the first case case one okay now what is case two case two is the problematic case so v could have exactly five neighbors and these five neighbors are now using five different colors already so when we put v back we don't know how to color v the idea here is that in order to color v we want to save one color so see if we can somehow use fewer colors to color the neighbors of v so for instance can we color this in yellow rather than blue okay or can we color this in blue rather than yellow okay so what we can do okay so so first of all we want to color the yellow in blue but then we need to take care of the case that this yellow one may be connecting to vertices in blue right so in that case what should we do because if this is colored blue then there will be color clashes here so in that sense if this is colored blue then we move on to color the neighboring blue vertices into yellow and then if this is yellow then we move on to color the neighbor of neighbors into blue and so on and so forth so we are going to do, try to do a yellow blue uh, path and then we swap the colors yellow to blue and blue to yellow is that okay now if this can be done now if this can be done without any problem then we save one color so in originally this is blue this is yellow but then we can change this to blue and blue so that we can use the yellow for v now so if this is the case then it is good so it is a perfect case for us but on the other hand it may not be perfect all the time the reason is that this yellow blue path may connect back to this vertex again yeah because it can be yellow blue yellow blue yellow blue yellow blue yellow blue okay so by the time we change it to blue it becomes blue yellow blue yellow blue yellow blue yellow so in that sense we are now what we are changing this to blue but at the same time we are moving this back to yellow so we do not save any color but in this case then this is a bad case for us but then we know that in in such a case then then this part will now be a closed region is that okay so what we can do next is we'll move on to change another pair of colors so here we look at the orange and the green so we want to find out orange green path so that we swap this orange into green green into orange and so on and so forth and then we know that this path will never reach this green the reason is that edges here cannot cross each other we are using the plain representation already so this orange green path cannot go out go outside this dotted line so if it cannot go out this dotted line then it cannot go back to this screen so so there is no problem so by switching the colors of the orange green vertex on the orange green path here then we are done we can save the color so that we can now be colored so we can now be colored in orange okay so so done so there are just two cases to consider mainly two cases to consider and and then the path that we are doing here is proved by construction right so we are using all the three forms of proofs techniques that we have studied in the class okay finally i want to introduce the Kuratovsky's theorem so Kuratovsky's theorem is a very strong theorem that classifies whether a graph is planar or not okay so first of all i want to talk about this concept called subdivision so let's say we have an edge if we add a node a vertex in between this edge so this vertex will have degree exactly two because we are joining these two and then we are actually splitting this edge the original edge one edge into two edges okay so this operation is called a subdivision on uv and then the opposite of this operation is we start from uv 
and then we take away the degree two vertices in between them, then this this operation is called smoothing. So we can smooth back to become this one. Okay. Now, Kuratovsky defines the word homeomorphic. So when you see morphic, it must be meaning about the, the shape. Okay. So homeo, somehow it is like similar. Okay. So we say G and H, they are homeomorphic. They are of some kind of similar shape. If one can be obtained to the other by a sequence of subdivision and smoothing operations. Okay. So for instance, let's consider this middle graph. So for this middle graph, we can do subdivision and subdivision to get the left-hand graph. We can also do subdivision and then subdivision to get the right-hand graph. So that means what? That means that this graph, you can use a sequence of smoothing and subdivision to make into the right-hand graph. And so we call this graph and this graph, they are homeomorphic. And then actually all these three graphs, they are homeomorphic to each other. Okay. Now, Kuratowski proved the following theorem. So he says that if a graph G is not planar, then G must contain something inside, a subgraph inside. G must contain a subgraph inside, and this subgraph is homeomorphic to K5 or K33. So we recall that K5 is not planar, K33 is not planar. So this Kurotovsky says that if G is not planar, that means that there must be some problematic part inside that looks like either K5 or K33. Now, the if part is easy to show, so you can think of it how to show, but the only if part I don't know how to show, so it is, it is rather hard. But anyway, we are going to take this theorem for granted and see how it can lead us to interesting results. So this is a Peterson graph. So a Peterson graph is you draw a pentagon and you draw a five-pointed star here like this, and then you join the corresponding vertices of the pentagon and the stars together. So this is a Peterson graph. Here we want to show that Peterson graph is not planar. So to show that it is not planar, then Kuratovsky tells us that there must be some part inside this inside this graph which looks like a K5 or K33. But then we see that although it really looks like a K5, but what we are, we should be looking for is not a K5, but should be a K33. Because we are talking about similarities by homeomorphic. So homeomorphic only add or remove degree two vertices. So the vertex degree cannot increase so in that case, you don't see any vertex with degree 5. So that means that, so for this graph, you cannot find a subgraph that is homeomorphic to K5. What well, instead is, we want to find a subgraph which is homeomorphic to K33. So how can we show this? Okay, the idea here is very simple. If we have seen this, okay, so what we are going to do first, yeah, I am coloring the vertices in distinct colors so to make us easier to, to see what happens. So the idea here is we just take away one vertex. Yeah, any vertex is okay. So what I'm going to do is I take away this vertex. So this is the remaining graph. So this is a subgraph of the original one. And then next part is so in this graph, we have degree 3 vertices and degree 2 vertices, right? They are going to be exactly 3 of the vertices that are degree 2. So they are corresponding to the neighbors of this removed vertex. So this one, this one, and this one. So what we are going to do, we are smoothing them. So think of this as one edge. We smooth it. So we join the red and the pale orange together. Yellow, blue, orange. We join yellow to orange together. Green pale green, pale yellow, we join the green with the pale yellow together. So we smooth this, smooth this, smooth this. So after smoothing, you will have this one, this one, this one, and this one, this one, this one, joining to each other. So after smoothing, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. And what is it? It is a K33. So that means what? That means that the original Peterson graph 
has a subgraph. This is a subgraph, and this subgraph, after smoothing, okay, it becomes K33, so it is homeomorphic to K33. Okay, we have a final example for today. So this graph looks like a K5, but then K5 here means that, so but instead here, there is an extra vertex, is that okay? So K5 should be joining this one to this one directly, but here we have a vertex here. So is this planar or non-planar? Okay, the first question here, it looks like a K5, but it is not. We cannot remove this vertex by the smoothing operation. Smoothing operation only removes a degree 2 vertex, so it is degree 4. So we cannot just say that we smooth this so that we join these two edge together and join these two edge together. So it's not. Indeed, this is, this is not not planar. This is a planar graph. So to show that it is a planar graph is easy. We just have a drawing. Okay, think of this as an orange vertex. We move the orange vertex outside. Yeah, we can join these two together. So originally it is linking to this one, this one, this one, this one. We move this outside, we can still link this to here, here, and here, and here. So for this one, this edge, we can move it outside. So it becomes this one. And, and so we see that there is no edge crossing each other. And so this is a planar graph. Okay, so that's all for today. Yeah, sorry for the mistake of the of the slide. So I will make corrections. And then you perhaps the best way is for you to make corrections on, on your part and then I will keep the uh, PDF up to date by putting it back to my to my to my homepage. Yeah, that's all. So thanks all for coming on this cold winter day. And then we will have a tutorial next week and then we will explain a few more questions related to graph okay so if you have any questions that you want to ask yeah please send us yeah thanks please send us uh, the questions through the questionnaire form okay that's all for today thanks a lot thank you thank you very much